Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing tonight, Kyle? Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? Doing all right. It's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. Is it really new anymore? Is it really new anymore? I'm going to keep saying it. (laughs) Like, I'm going to keep saying it. The sooner you accept that, the better. You know, this is just going to be this is just going to be the thing and I'm not going to just just to make it a thing. So. I mean, that's then that's also the thing. Whatever the thing is, that's the thing. It's the thing is what we make it. It's the friends we learned. It's the friends we earned along the way. All right, Kyle, today is a special Thursday edition of the Sloop Picks. There's no Ohio State game this Saturday, so there's no Know Your Enemy this Thursday. So guess what? You get the Sloop Picks a week, excuse me, not a week, a day early, which is what we're doing here today. Um, Another change up for today. Um, We started this tradition last year, so it's a newish tradition if we're counting what is and isn't new, because apparently that matters now if you're Kyle. What is and isn't new. um, Whenever we have a week where Ohio State doesn't play. We uh, instead of having one guest picker, we ask the discord to each pick like one person picks a game. So we have multiple guest pickers. Uh, One person will pick uh, a single game and we have six and a half people to do that. Six and a half. What does that mean? Well, you're just going to have to stick around and find out. (laughs) It's a surprise. It's a surprise. All right, Kyle. Um, any anything else? Oh, we're also going to do Chaos Theory later in the show. Uh, Chaos Theory is a game we invented where you have to pick a unranked team to defeat a ranked team, and your score is based off of high how highly ranked the uh, losing team is. All right, Kyle. Are we ready to do the slew picks? Yeah, let's get right into it. Typically, we do six, but this but this week's, as Jared mentioned, with the house state being on a bye week, we got in that extra one, so six and a half. Uh, <laughs> I mean, te- te- well, no, that's not what the six and a half means. That's not what the six I, and a half I means. I know, I know. But uh, yeah, I mean, we always do seven. It's just that we typically on the seventh one go. Uh, if you want to hear our uh, opinions on the seventh one, go listen to the Thursday episode. But this is this is the Thursday episode. So, you know, what's what's a, what's a guy to do? All right, let's I guess let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first game, Friday game. It is a Friday night game on Fox, Kansas State taking on Arizona. Kansas State is a six and a half point favorite in this game. Six and a half points. Um, oh, I. Why didn't it save? Um, never mind. My problem. Don't worry about it. Um, All right. <laughs> I had positioned my coins already, <laughs> and then I went and I I turned that layer on, or rather that layer. He doesn't. No one cares. Um, I turned it on, and then it's not there anymore. And whatever. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm not upset. This isn't throwing me off. Kyle, who do you have in the first pick? Honestly, I got I got Arizona to cover. I think this is going to be a really close game here. I know we've mentioned a number of times on this uh, on this uh, podcast here that we that we really like the um, the quarterback from Universe or from. Uh, from Arizona, uh, yeah, yeah. Noah, uh, and I, I, I like him to keep, to keep this to keep, to keep this game to game yeah <laughs> to keep this game close here. Um, so six and a half points, yeah, I'll, I'll take Arizona to cover at least. I agree. Um, I, I think this is like a 50 50 game as far as who wins it. So if you're going to give me six and a half points to pick one of the teams, I'm going to pick one of the teams. And they're giving me six and a half points to pick Arizona, so I'm picking Arizona. Yeah. Kyle, who is our guest picker for game number one, and who do they pick? 
Oh, uh, we got Z spikes. Hi, Z spikes. Oh, uh, Z spikes big, in the chat. Big twelve. Um, uh, the button, the the button, Arizona. I got to zoom in here because I'm having a hard time reading here. De- uh, writing the na- writing writing the nation's debut. Thank you. The writing the nation's longest active win streak, thanks to um, TCUN uh, getting exposed last week. Roll into Manhattan, Kansas, Friday night for their first taste of Big 12 Conference football as they take on Kansas State for the first time since 1978. I say just a taste because this game is a strange non-conference clash of conference opponents. Arizona, despite losing 33 players to the transfer portal this offseason, have managed to extend their win strength to nine, including a win versus Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. Both the Wildcats have come into the come this come into the showdown as unbeaten licking their wounds after escaping chaos watchers versus low tier cupcakes last week expect some fireworks in this one as it should come down to the last position in true big 12 fashion uh i'll beat with k state pulling it out late 37 to 31 which gives me arizona with the points and the new helmet unveil all right that's all three going arizona Kyle, what do we have as game number two? Uh, game number two here, we have LSU and South Carolina. Uh, in this game, this is Nooner at, on ABC. So, so Austin, just like, what Austin? It's not, it's not your show, surprise. Austin. It's our show. If you have a surprise, you, just unveil you, it. LSU is a seven and a half point favorite in this game. LSU. Uh, wait, uh, Tent McLean yards over under 18. Oh, for each. Yeah, he has under for each game. Uh, I'm going to go under. I'm going to go under as well. All right. Uh, LSU Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> LSU seven and a half point favorite. This is in South Carolina. But I. Jared. Yeah. Why are people so high on South Carolina right now? I, I, I'm not understanding this. Can you, can you, can no. you help me out? Like what's, am I missing something from South Carolina? Maybe I'm also maybe, confused. Maybe, maybe people in the chat can tell me why people are so high up on South Carolina. Is did it, they have an impressive week? Number two. Uh, they did. They did beat Kentucky. I think it was like 31 to six, something like that. Okay. What about week number one, though? Well, that that is that is the question. Uh, they played Old Dominion and they smashed them, right, Jared? Yeah. No, twenty three to nineteen over Old Dominion. And before someone's like, well, Old Dominion was actually pretty good last year, guys. Yeah, they're like a decent chunk of their players went to Indiana. <laughs> so. Uh... You know, they, they beat another SEC team where they must be good. That's that's how that works. All right. Uh, South Carolina, LSU, who uh, I'll, I'll go first. Uh, yeah, I'll go first. Uh, ultimately, I'm I'm <laughs> do you think LSU wins this game? I'm not saying I like South Carolina all that much. I don't. But I also, quite frankly, don't like LSU that much. I do think LSU wins, but at seven and a half, I'm willing to go with the Gamecocks here. I got the Tigers. I just, I don't see it. I don't see it. All Who's right, our Kyle. guest picker for this one, Jared? Uh, no, no one wanted this. Oh, I, I just asked chat GBT instead. Do you think LSU will beat South Carolina this Saturday? And what do you think the final score will be? Is the I, I knew right away I shouldn't ask it about gambling because I felt like it was going to tell me no. So I just asked what the final score was. <laughs> Predicting sports outcomes can be tricky due to the many variable involved, like team form, injuries, and even weather conditions. As of now, LSU generally has a strong football program. And if they're <laughs> performing well this <laughs> <laughs> and if they're performing well this season, they might have the edge over South Carolina. However, South Carolina can put 
put a tough opponent and be and can certainly put up a good fight. As for the final score, that's even more speculative. If LSU is the favorite, they might win up by a margin, but it's hard to say exactly how much. A reasonable guess might be something like LSU 34, South Carolina 21. But keep in mind, this is just a rough estimate. That's LSU. The computers, guys, listen, everyone's like, hey, we should have a computer decide the playoffs. We should have the computers decide the polls. Well, guess what? There's your fucking computer. Uh, Austin says Dylan Stewart sacks plus tackle for loss over under 2.1. I'm going to go over on that one. Yeah, I'll go over as well. All right. Third game, Jared. Third game. We have an ad break. We're going to go ahead and take a quick ad break here. And uh, if you want to avoid these ad breaks, head on over to the sloopcast.com where you can find many links such as our um, Patreon patreon.thesloopcast.com where you become a patron to avoid these ad breaks. Many other links over at thesloopcast.com such as our YouTube page, our uh, merch stores, a lot of other great links in there. So head on over there, support your uh, local podcasters, and we will be right back after this break. Okay, Kyle, we're back. Alabama, Wisconsin. Yeah, this is Fox's big game here. Big Alabama news Saturday. Country. Yeah, Alabama heading up north w- without Saban. <laughs> we've we've been we've saying it. We, we've been saying it. Here we aren't. Yep. Alabama, 15 and a half point favorite. 15 and a half. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a, a lot. lot, but we, I don't know. We, we've are, we've seen Wisconsin struggle already this year. I mean, the team in the state absolutely blew the doors off. Wisconsin struggled against and Alabama, Alabama struggled against South Florida. It's still like crushed. Will spread because they tacked on a bunch of points at the end. You might see something similar. You might see a, uh, you know, n- not totally crush Wisconsin at first, but pile it on them later. And Kyle, I will say I put actual, I may, I may or may not have won some money due to the absolutely laughable spread that was put on tech Michigan. So I may have made some money last week rolling some of that money forward and I may have placed that biggest bet on Alabama to win and cover. <laughs> By the way, I got most important here. The currently projected at 77 for this game. <laughs> Give me Bama. Yeah, I got, I got Alabama. I got Alabama here. I just too much talent on here. Might, might be close in the in the first half there, but talent's going to take over. Uh, Wisconsin's not what they've used to be in years past here. I understand that Fickle is still rebuilding this team, but it's not enough to to be Alabama or even come close here. So I'll I'll pick the Crimson Tide to cover. Who is our guest, and what do they say? Stewart Stewart E four says Bama is still a great program under a new head coach. They lost some of their talent, but had have. Plenty in the wings to be a great program, at least for a few years. Wisconsin is a slow, lumbering defense first, runs second, and everything else pulling up the rear. Luke is in the second year, which proved to be his upward trajectory in Cincy. Give me Badgers to jump around the tide and lose by less than 15. All right, so he's picking Wisconsin. All right. And I, you do for not to win. Uh, Austin says Milro rush be seven and a half over. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go over on that one as well. All right. Next next game here, Jared, we have Boston College and Missouri. Uh, I had to double look at this. I, I didn't realize Boston College was ranked, but again, ranking rankings this early on does not matter. But either way, uh, Missouri in this game is a 16 and a half point favorite. 
Um, yeah, uh, we have Missouri. We got Boston College. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Like Boston College has had a couple good games. People been a little hyped on Boston College. Uh, I, I think there are better teams that could have been ranked, and I think Missouri is looking less this year. I mean, and I get it. They haven't played anyone yet. Boston College is by far the toughest game on their schedule so far. This will be their toughest game. That being said, they're winning the games that they're supposed to and how they're supposed to win them. Kyle, I don't care who you're playing. Missouri has pitched two shutouts out of two games. No one has scored on Missouri yet. So even if Boston College manages to score points, Missouri is also scoring some points. If one of the best wide receiving cores in college football, um, I'm I'm taking Missouri and the 16 does not scare me. Uh, I, I think they absolutely blow out Boston College. Give me uh, give me maybe minus 16 and a half. I mean, I mean, this let's, I also let's may not... have put some money on. Well, let, let's let's not um, dismiss what Boston College has done. They they beat Florida State in Week One. So did Georgia Tech. Uh, beat them twenty eight to thirteen, and then they turn around. They turn around and uh, shut out their second opponent. Who so was? I mean, you look at Missouri. You, you look at Missouri, and they're um the swank the ugh, I can't pr- I can't pronounce uh, the Quinces. De Quin de, de Quincene. Wow. Is it Duquesne? Ooh. Oh boy. Duquesne? It... Holy crap. Kyle, it's French. It's it's fine. <laughs> you're way. not from you're not from the so, Pittsburgh area like me. Yeah. You 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 oh my, yeah. I struggled heavily with that one. Either way, so Boston College <laughs> on their on their in that game shut out to the team 56 to nothing. Which I mean, you look at Missouri, and they play two um, two teams that are not that good either, and they shut them out. But Boston College played one decent team in Florida State and held them to thirteen points. So this might be a closer game than than you might think. And, but I'm still going to go with Missouri State. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I, I can tell by the look on your face. I'm sure we're going to go with Missouri. I just. I. Boston College is not going to be able to score enough points to keep up with Missouri. So I'll, I'll pick Missouri to cover here. It, it is a lot of it. It is a lot of points, but. Yeah. Boston College has has the better has the better resume over Missouri, but I'll still take Missouri. All right, Kyle, who has game number four? And uh, what is their portion? Zach says. Uh, Missouri shuts up BC. Man, a few words, but I, I, I like the brevity. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zach. Ready? Uh, Boston College team rushing yards over under 148 and a half yards. Under. I'm not I'm not saying Missouri blanks. I'm not saying Missouri gets a third straight shutout. I'm not blank Boston College. But 150 definitely goes against my vision of this game. Yeah, that's Florida State. Look. That's that's Florida State. Yeah, they, they did held them. To, wow. Yeah. Um Gosh. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'll, I'm gonna go under, as well. I'll go under as well. All right, Kyle. Game number five. Game number five. We have Oklahoma and the Green Wave of Tulane. Tulane is a thirteen and a half point underdog. To Oklahoma. Yeah. 
Uh, was that it? Was that the was that the That's whole it. thing? Okay, <laughs> I was expecting thing, you yeah. to keep going. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you were going to keep going. Okay. Maybe that's why maybe I'm expecting you to go more. Um, I'm not saying Oklahoma loses this game. I am going to say, however, that Tulane's going to play them very tightly. Uh, I Tulane, I think they screwed up not getting the upset last week. Uh, I, I still think they have that upset in them and it might be Oklahoma. It might be. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I am saying that the game's going to come down to the wire. There will be a final drive by one of these teams that matter. And 13 and a half does not fit that narrative. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to take Tulane to at least cover. Yeah. Yeah. Read my mind here. I got Tulane to cover as well. Uh, not sold on Oklahoma, uh, but yeah, I got I got the green wave to cover. Esquire is uh, our we're picking. in trouble because we have oh no, never mind. We have one difference. I pick South we have one difference. I pick South yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have one difference. Esquire says here, as a current offensive coordinator of the Tulane Green Wave on CFB twenty five, I'm uniquely Ooh, qualified okay. to weigh in here. He's an expert. Mackay Hughes. Look out everyone, a, we got an expert. Mackay Hughes is a dog at running back. Fast, explosive, and a good pass catcher out of the backfield. Mario Williams is a massive deep threat on the outside, and Alex Ballman is a stud at tight end. A bit of a surprise that Darian Mensa seems to have beaten out Ty Thompson at the starting job at quarterback. I played Thompson in the video game, but 70% completion percentage, 500 plus yards, four touchdowns, and only one interception speaks for itself. Uh, TLDR. Tulane is a potentially very explosive offense and their uniform uniforms are S tier. They are. They, they have I only, tier only, list not long ago. And I think we put Tulane at S tier. I have only box score watched Oklahoma and it wasn't impressive against Houston. I'm definitely picking Tulane to cover, but I also like them to spring the upset over outright this week. Chaos theory. Okay, we have at least one vote for chaos theory. We'll see uh, if Spikes and Austin, uh, when it's time, when it's time to have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma Tulane time when the game goes final over under at seven twelve and a half p.m. Uh, I think this game. I think this is like I said. I think this is a game where the fourth over. quarter is going to matter. Better, and that tends over. to mean that the game goes a bit later. Therefore, I'll be going over. Over. All right. Next up here, Oregon and Oregon State. Oregon going on the road to take on the Beavers. 3.30 on Fox. And Kyle, we will sir, or provide our answers to who we thinks who we think will win. And if uh, Oregon is able to cover right after this ad break if you want to skip these ad breaks visit us at patreon.thesloopcast.com where you can get a uh get a membership for as little as three dollars a month and if you don't want a monthly fee even of something as small as three dollars you can pay for the entire year up front and it ends up being like 32 50 or something like that i don't know i've never signed up for my own patreon but it's essentially like getting you know pay for get the 12th month free it roughly plays out like that. So you can you can visit patreon.thesloopcast.com or discord.thesloopcast.com or just thesloopcast.com. Uh, here are those ad breaks now. All right, next game is Oregon and Oregon State. Oregon State coming into this game uh, as a 16 and a half point underdog. Uh, since Jared picked last one, I will go this one here. Oregon's been playing fire. Oregon's been playing with fire all season round, all season long. They get to play uh, one of their rivals this weekend here. 69 points is a lot. And like Oregon definitely has the better team. They should absolutely be able to uh, take care of business this weekend. But they should have done that the, the first two weeks as well. So. They haven't proven to me that they can take care of business. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the beavers in this one. All right. Um, yeah. 
Exactly. I mean, ultimately what Kyle said, the Oregon's been underperforming this year. Um, they've yet to put, I, I mean, I'm sure they've yet to cover. I think that goes without saying. Um, not that I think Oregon State's all that good this year, because I don't think Oregon State's all that good this year. But 16 and a half feels like a big number for an Oregon team that is not hitting on all cylinders right now. All right. And uh, Austin says here, uh, look what they took from us. The Civil War. Oregon has looked lackluster to start the season, especially after the lofty expectations. Oregon State might not be a juggernaut, but there's certainly a better team than Idaho and probably Boise as well. 16 and a half points is a lot, especially with the game being in Corvallis. My theme of the week is take the points because I don't trust many teams. Many of the teams are ranked past the top five to six this year, even though the Pac-2 sucks. Give me Oregon State to cover, but Oregon to win 31 to 17. So all three of us going with Oregon State there. Um, right. Jordan James rushing yards plus Dylan Gabriel passing yards. Over under. Oh, boy. It's a big number. Yeah, but it's it's there. It's top running back versus top or yeah, with with not versus with the top quarterback. Um. Gosh. So what, that could be like 100 yards plus 321 yards. I'm going to go under, I think. Yeah. Uh, lo- looking at their combined yards right now as I'm adding these up real quick. Um, well, actually, it's it, it is better than I thought. 410 yards combined for for the two for both of them uh good that's a that's a good line there austin i I thought that was a lot lower than (laughs) than that there um yeah i'll go under i'll go under as well all right kyle our final game it is the final game georgia and kentucky georgia and kentucky uh 7 30 this this is the primetime game on ABC, Georgia and Kentucky. That t- that Sad. tells you how lackluster this weekend is. What what tells you how terrible the evening slate is, is that I just recently, we uh, every Saturday, potentially Friday this week, but every Saturday we, we get together in the Discord server and we watch one of the time windows, not Friday. Listen, then go vote. I don't know what to tell you, Austin. Go vote. It's one of three options. Go vote for the other two. You're allowed to vote multiple times as long as you're vo- voting for multiple windows. Go vote. Anyway. Point is, I have a different game Friday. Then go vote for the two Saturday windows. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> you can vote for both of the Saturday windows. That's that is for the, the goes. You did. Good job. Then let let the chips fall where they may. Point is, every every Saturday we get together in the Discord server and we watch one of the windows, you know, like the afternoon window, the midday window, the evening window. I didn't even put up the evening window for a vote this week. And we only have one game from the evening window in the sloop picks like I had to go with I had to go with a Friday night game and three separate. Actually, this graphic's wrong. Missouri Boston College is at 1245. That's that's an afternoon game. This graphic's wrong. That's my fault. Um anyway, just just in case anyone's watching this and depending upon us for for times, uh Missouri Boston College kicks off at 1245, not 330. I must have forgot to update that. Point yeah, is the evening the window s- sucks. Your next best game? Colorado and Colorado State, which that could that actually might be the better game to watch, possibly. Yeah, but 
But other than that, Maryland and Virginia, hmm, maybe. Or Indiana, Indiana and UCLA. And UCLA. Indiana and UCLA. That's it. <laughs> that's that's I'm not, the game. I'm not right kidding. There. I almost put that in the slew picks. Because I was that desperate for a second evening game before I said, screw it. I'm just going to do three noon games. Mm-hmm. Uh, getting back to the Georgia Kentucky game, Georgia is a 23 and a half point favorite in this game. Big number. And, and give me in the, uh, that meme, that meme where it says, uh, well, actually it's the opposite of the meme where they say that, that number is, um, too damn high. Well, that name or number is not, <laughs> it's, it needs to be higher. Uh, I got, I got yeah. Georgia to cover. I got Georgia I, to cover. I totally agree. I, don't like Kentucky this year. Um, I think I would, th- this game could have been like, I, it would have to have been like 31 to scare me off. I think last, it would have had to have been like 30 and a half to scare me off. Yeah. Kentucky sucks. Uh, totally. When's the last time Kentucky beat Georgia? Well, I Anybody mean, the, know? The, the question for the sake of this, show would be when was the last time Kentucky got within 23 points of Georgia, which I assume would have been last year, right? Like I think Kentucky played Georgia semi closely last year, not closely, closely, but better than 23 points. 51 to 13. Nope. Last year. 2022, 16 to six. Okay. Before that 30 to 13. Kentucky completed six passes last week, says Spikes. Isn't that how many passes Western Michigan had against Ohio State? It was like six or eight. Mm. Anybody know? Anybody know the last time Kentucky beat Georgia? No, I'm going to say 30 years ago. 2009. Okay, that's significantly less than... Ford administration. Basically 30 years ago. <laughs> Don't say that. That's not true. It's nowhere near true. He said 2009, not 1999, which is way very- closer to 30 years ago than I care to acknowledge. This is like very similar to like the Ohio State and uh, Michigan rivalry. Like K- Kentucky's only won like just a couple of times since the turn of the millennium. I see what you did there. Especially after Michigan gets a couple of those wins. Shout shout outs to J.K. Dobbins. Love you, buddy. (laughs) Just got uh, those. That's all. Now do Kentucky versus Florida. Oh. They've beaten Florida once in like 30 years. I, I think that may have been the number I was thinking of when I said 30 years, Austin. And they play every year. Yeah. Didn't they just, it wasn't the win like in 2002. Like, didn't they just break that 30 year streak recently? 2022. Something like that. Yeah. 1986 until 2018. 2018. So, so further ago than so 19, even realized. 1987, 1987, from 1987, which Florida won, all the way until 2017, Florida's won, yeah, 30, 30 years though. But then since then, Kentucky is four and two. Okay. Man, Florida's got to stop sucking, Austin. All right, uh, Kyle, who had the guest pick for Georgia, Kentucky? And what did they? How did they pick it? How, how does he pronounce his? How does he pronounce his username? I don't know. I was going with Azile. Azile? OK, it's A Z Y one E. So I, I assume the one's an L. Azile. All right. He's. He says um, Georgia wins fifty six to seven because because UK is ass. I'm going to assume you mean Kentucky and not the other UK. Uh, that's my nuanced. United analysis. Kingdom's kind of ass too, if we're being honest. <laughs> that's my political uh, commentary for the week. 
and Jared, Jared just broke rule number one. I, you know, I think we can all get behind England being ass. <laughs> I'm in a goddamn American. Many of us died to prove that England equals ass. All right. And yeah, I'm using England and UK synonymously. If you don't like it, you're an Englishman and you're ass. <laughs> Fight me. All right. So we all, we all England, United Kingdom, Great Britain. It's all the same to me. I don't know the difference. I'm an American. My forefathers died to not give a fuck what the difference is. The show is off the rails. Maybe. All right. What what is Austin? I'm an American. We don't like trains. Of course, we're off the rails. What is what? What does Austin have? By the way, he said uh, UK is ass. So Georgia. I assume. No, no, I said that all right. No, Austin, what's Austin's over under for this? Oh, thing? I know. Yeah, I know. It's just I was ranting, so I didn't update the graphic yet. Okay. Uh, Carson Beck completion percentage 73.369. Since he hasn't done that at all this year, and he played Worst in teams. week one, he played Tennessee Tech and didn't yeah. get that. Oh, I'll say under. I'll say under. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. And uh, Carson, Carson Beck, I'm not saying Carson Beck is bad because I've seen some bad quarterbacks this this year. Um, And I don't think, yeah, well, he played Clemson for one of the games. He played an FCS school for the other game. I don't think Carson Beck is bad. Let me say that. I do think he is overrated, however. I think he is a quarterback. I don't think he's a five-star quarterback. If you're you're looking for me to say this bluntly, he's not C.J. Stroud. He's not Justin Fields. I don't think he is even Kyle McCord. I'm going to let that one sit. Interesting take. I don't think he's even Kyle McCord. I think he's just a guy. He's better. He's better than just a guy. But by five star standards, he's just a guy. The draft community loves him. I don't care. The draft community falls in love with terrible quarterbacks all the time. This is true. Case in point. The team on the other side of the field that we're currently talking about, Will Levis in Kentucky. I'm real tired of hearing about Will Levis as an NFL quarterback, and I can't wait to be proven completely correct about that. Yeah, they like J.J. McCarthy. I mean, exactly. And they kept drafting Bama quarterbacks, even though we all knew what that was about. I mean, with the exception of, of Tua, who was different. Two is legitimately different, but all the other Bama quarterbacks that got drafted somehow. Go figure. All right, Kyle. Oh, Jared. It is time for chaos theory. Two is it also is. good for a large, uh, for a large reason because of his coach. I mean, you can say that about any quarterback. Uh, you, you, you need the coaching. You need coaching. And before you're like, oh, what about Tom Brady? What about Peyton Manning? Well, they are exceptions. They're elite among elites. All right. Um, No disrespect to whoever was coaching in Tampa Bay. (laughs) All right. Uh, Week three. Kyle, you we already have ours written in. Um. So let's say them before we put them on the board. I I have. Yeah, you did. It it was only an hour ago. I don't remember me giving you one. I I threw a lot of names out. I don't know if I. you seem to have picked one in particular. You feel free to change your answer. If you change your answer, I'll change the draft. I'll change the scoreboard. All right. 
I, however, will be picking Oregon State to beat Oregon. I think there are several really good chaos options this week. I'm not going to go through them all until everyone else makes a pick. But as far as like point value is concerned with Oregon still being ranked in the top 10, you get a real high score to go with Oregon. So I think there are maybe some safer options, but I decided to swing for the fences a little bit more this week. So I'm going to go with Oregon to be our, our chaos theory of the week or my chaos theory of the week. Anyway, Kyle, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I I was kind of caught. I was kind of stuck between two, uh, the, the two, the two that I was looking for was Oklahoma and Tulane. Okay. And Notre Dame and Purdue. Those, are, those okay. are the two that I was looking at. Notre Dame has, I don't know what's going on with their offense. Their offense is absolute crap, which kind of makes me want to pick Purdue, but Purdue is Purdue. <laughs> Purdue is Purdue. And they, they, shut out, they shut out their one game that they've played so far, but it's against Indiana State. But man, two, two lanes been... Tulane's been fighting uh, this year too. They shut out their first game and they came really close to beating Kansas State here. You know, I'm going to try to get the points, so I'll, I'll pick. I'll pick Tulane. I'll pick Tulane in this one. Okay, that is not the answer you gave me at the beginning. Um, you gave, <laughs> Michigan, yeah, <laughs> you gave me Michigan, uh, but Tulane to beat uh, Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, what's Oklahoma currently ranked? 15th? Is that right? Uh, 15th, yeah. So that is worth 11 points. Um, let's see. In the chat currently, we have Esquire, Austin, and Spikes. Spikes said Michigan. Austin said Ole Miss. And earlier, Esquire also said Oklahoma. Guys, I'm going to need a consensus from the chat. I'm going to need Spike? someone. I'm going to need F- one of you to. A, well, Arkansas State to beat Michigan. I'm going to need one of you to abandon your pick and, and go with the other one. You don't feel like Arkansas State just doesn't feel likely. I'm fine with either of the other two spikes can pick. All right. So he spikes, he put it on you. Did you yeah, but he, all, he put it on Spikes, but he also took away Spikes' specific answer. <laughs> Esquire's in the room, but I haven't seen him type in a minute. He might just be listening. He might not be by his phone. Ole Miss oh, sounds right. He says um, Ole Miss. So you know, I, lo- I looked okay, at Ole it Miss. It looks like for- we're going Ole Miss. We, have, we have, uh, Austin and Spikes are going to go with Ole Miss. I looked at Ole Miss for a hot second. But then looked at, but then I looked at Wake Forest and yeah, I stopped there and and decided not to pick them. Yeah. Yeah. And they are ranked fifth. Yeah. And go watch this game. It is on the CW network. For real? The CW network. I mean, it's a broadcast station. I think everyone should be able to get it. Right. Like it's, it's over the air broadcast. Uh, it was, it was, it, was it fifth or sixth for Ole Miss? What's the AP right now? Uh, fifth. Fifth. So that is That's worth a- 21 points. Ole Miss. That's a lot. That's a, that's a lot of points. If you get that right. Best of luck to you. Yeah. It's a big actually, score. Actually, no, actually no, but yeah, yeah. Screw you guys. <laughs> no, I, I'd be happy just to see Ole Miss fall. I, I, I think I care more yeah. about the chaos than I do about the chaos theory scoreboard. If I'm being honest, I'd be happy. All right. I think that's it. I think that's all. I think that's all we got here, Jared. All this, right. This third segment went a lot longer than, than it should have, but here we are. Yeah, here we are. Uh, so, yeah, with that being said, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Something really cool that I saw, something that Northern – Illinois does for with their with their uh football program. They have a wall that they call the Boneyard. It's where the where the Huskies stack their marquee wins over major programs. They will add their 19th bone 
after their first win versus a top five team. And then they posted a picture of their boneyard with all the with all the teams that they that they've beaten include teams like Kansas State and Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, and Alabama in there. Alabama part of their boneyard. That's that's fun. I uh, think Kansas, yep, yeah, Kansas is in there twice. Yeah. Here, here, I both like this and dislike this. I I like this because they're Because they're a smaller program, it feels like small program stuff. You know what I mean? Like when you're a small program, this is cool. But when you're Clemson and you're doing it, as Clemson does do it with their with their tombstones, it feels cheesy. Like, yeah, you want them. So what? You're, you're a big program. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to win big games. Yeah. So like well, when Clemson well, does it, it's cheesy. But in this case, I like it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Oh mm-hmm. God! How did the how did the sloop the, the so the two thousand how did two thousand happen? Kyle, did you know I'm winning the sloop picks? No, I don't. Back in oh, two thousand and three, okay. so back in two thousand and three, they added three to that boneyard. There, they added three: Alabama, Iowa State, and Maryland. What they weren't do, missing do they, in no three. Do they have like math on like? How, how do you deter? Is it just a vibe? Like how how do you how do you pick what a major win is? I don't know. It just says marquee wins. Uh, that's all. I, okay. That's all I saw. So it's just a vibe. Mm-hmm. We can retake the slew picks. Okay. <laughs> Somebody says nope, they just not need to win that one. I already did a they, political take this episode. As choir, not doing it. They they just need a win over Illinois, and the whole Big Ten West gauntlet is complete. <laughs> There you go. Except the right, Big Ten it. West is dead. Oops. Oh, well. It is dead. Yep. That's it. That's all I got. Jared, here. just curious if anyone ahead of you in the sloop picks. Um, well, according to this scoreboard, no. The in-show sloop picks, I am, in fact, the winner. Kyle, do you have – oh, you already did Kyle's Corner. Uh, tonight's ending music – will be brought to you by a country band out of Columbus called Drift Mouth. That's two separate words. That is Drift Mouth. Uh, So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Drift Mouth.